Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at London Liverpool Street and we're going to ride the Elizabeth Line out to Abbey Wood. It's the 24th of May, 2020. It's the day the Elizabeth Line opened and I'm very excited. I've already done the section from Paddington and visited each station. Have a look at link on screen now, you can see that video. We're now going to continue from Zone 1 out eastwards and London 10. So if you were to get the existing TfL services from Shenfield, you'd come through those ticket barriers here. And I've just been given this leaflet. It shows you how to change out Liverpool Street. I mean, for me, it's not so much of a problem because I already knew, but say if you didn't know, then this leaflet would be very useful. But it's also, you know, it's quite nice. Um, it's like a souvenir of today. So I'll probably keep this forever. So as we come down onto the main concourse, you can see there's all the great Eastern platforms and the West Anglia mainline platforms, you know, which travel onto places like Norwich and Cambridge and various other places. We're making our way now towards what, well, the gate line I've been through many times, the Metropolitan Line gate line, but I'm not going to go through that one, although that shows a way to Elizabeth Line. I want to go to the new one, which is outside the station. So it does say, look, towards Abbey Wood, Heathrow and Reading. Of course, for Heathrow and Reading, you'd have to change trains at Paddington, as we saw in part one. So, as I said, I have been through that gate line quite a few times before. So my plan is, what I'm going to do... We'll go out the station, we'll go through this little shopping centre bit which takes us under the road and there's a new entrance just round the corner. So, coming out here, we're right now, we're leaving Liverpool Street Station, we're into this short shopping centre bit, we're underneath the road, there's a road above us and uh, we come up into this shopping centre. Now the interesting thing here, there's a lot of building work going on. What they've done, they've demolished the building they built on the site of Broad Street Station. Broad Street was a London terminus trains tend to go to places like, um, well, where did they go? They went around the North London line, various other places, fairly suburban and in a suburban, nowhere, you know, sort of long distance, but that closed in 1986. Most of the lines it, that used it are still open or have reopened, such as the section up through Hoxton and Haggerston is, um, and Shoreditch is the extension of the East London line, but there, where that funny sculpture is, that's where Broad Street Station used to be. Of course, I never got to go out Broad Street, although it was a fairly late closure, closed way after beaching, it was a bit before my time. But what I did get to do, of course, is ride the Elizabeth Line, and that's what we're going to do. So there's the construction sites. It makes it seem like a long time ago, the fact that it closed, what they built on the site of it being closed has been demolished. A lot of building work going on here, but some of it's finished, as in the Elizabeth Line. Of course, as I said in part one, I'll have to come back when they connect them up. So one day you'll be able to get on the train at Shenfield and go all the way through. But at the moment, I'm excited to be going towards Abbey Wood. There we are. That is the Liverpool Street Station. The new entrance outside the station. So we'll go down here. Go down the escalator. <gasps> There's another inclinator. Right, let's go in this. We're not going in the escalator. We'll go in the inclinator. As we saw in part one, at Farringdon Station, they had these inclinators. We're going to go in this one here. So. For those of you who don't know, an inclinator is basically a lift that's not vertical, which in my books makes it a funicular railway. So effectively now I'm riding a form of railway. It's very short. This is probably the shortest railway in London. I once did a video, which I think is the shortest railway in the UK, at the Astra Miniature Railway. This is even shorter than that, so we are talking really short. Um, I have forgotten to press the button, and of course it doesn't go if you don't press the button. Anyway, we're going down now. This is the shortest train ride I will probably ever feature on Henry's Adventures. But when we go to the bottom, the adventure continues. Very exciting. So here we are. This must be the shortest inclination. Well, I might find shorter, I don't know, because I'm exploring this video as I go. I'll just let you see. I can see from one end of the line to the other there. Now, let's go and find the Elizabeth line. So that's the gate line there. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, and that will go. So you could, if you go that way, you go to the Metropolitan line. I'm going to have to get my ticket out. We're going to go through and down, down to the Elizabeth line. I've just come through the ticket barriers, and I have found another inclinator going down. And well, look, you can just see it's already going down. It's quite long. If you look at the adjacent escalator. It's probably the longest one we've encountered so far. So I'm going to stay here. I'll press the button to call it back. So come back up and we're going to descend down and continue 
eastwards on the Elizabeth Line. Well, that was exciting coming down on the funicular uh, or the inclinator. So there's two. We've come on, I think, the shortest and the longest that I've seen so far. Look at that especially. The other funny thing is, if you look, there's always people are just standing here marvelling at it and taking pictures. I wonder how long this will last, but you don't normally see this at tube stations. You've seen a few tourists, but look, every other sort of Londoner who comes down here is stopping to take pictures, which I think is really nice. It's like, I keep saying, everyone's really excited by this opening. And it is exciting that we've got these inclinators. I mentioned a couple of others in my last video. Another place where there is one, it's not in London, but somewhere you might not expect to see one, is at the Football Museum in Manchester. They've got an inclinator there, and that one actually has intermediate stops because it's, it's basically the lift to each floor. So it's noticeably busier down here. When I was over at Paddington and Farringdon and that, the stations I really expected to be busy were fairly quiet, but Liverpool Street is really busy. Now, as we found in the last video, you can actually get out into Moorgate Station because I got here and I saw the sign to Northern Line. So I followed it and I was sort of half thinking, sure Northern Line doesn't go to Liverpool Street. Um, and, I, and I was right, it doesn't, but it's um, they've put like a way through. So you effectively could walk into the gate line, walk through the gate line here at Liverpool Street and you could walk out the gate line at Moorgate without traveling. You could do the same, or you, no, you can't quite do the same. You could almost do it at Farringdon and Barbican if they put an, ex an entrance in there at um, Barbican. So we're going down an escalator now. There's no inclinator on this one. There was a lift, so I think the platforms will be down there. So I'm going to continue eastwards towards Abbey Wood under the Thames and just continue to explore this fantastic new railway that, well, I've waited years for it to open. I remember when I was a child they were talking of, you know, building Crossrail and it, you know, kept getting cancelled in the 90s and then eventually they announced it was happening and then they started building it and here we are today. We're coming down into the new station. Look at that, it's massive. We kept saying in the other video, it's on so much bigger scale than a tube station. It, it's really, you know, rather huge. It's, it's very exciting though. I just, um, you know, think it's great. So, westbound platform B towards Heathrow, Reading, and doesn't actually go that far yet, where you have to change to Paddington. We're going to the eastbound platform A for Abbey Wood where we shall, well, we'll go, that's the end of the line. That, and um, it'll be very exciting to, to see that. It'll be a bit above ground when we go there. So there's a train due in one minute, it says Abbey Wood. So I'm gonna stand here, we'll wait for our train to arrive, and we'll continue our journey eastwards. So we have arrived at Whitechapel, another massive station. Just looks like it goes on sort of to infinity down there. It just goes on and on and on. So this is the eastbound platform. So we travel east. What I'm going to do before we go out, walk through this one here. It's very quiet down there. It's complete contrast. Like a moment ago at Liverpool Street, it seemed half of London was there, but no one seems to want to be at Whitechapel. But I'm here and um, I'm excited to explore this station. Again, it is a station I've changed that many times over the years, from you know the Hammersmith and City and the District Line down to what used to be the East London Line, now part of London Overground. Everyone's down that end. It's deserted down this end. The other funny thing I keep thinking is quite often when I go and visit railway stations, I usually say, oh, this station opened on the whatever of June, say, 
1867 or something like that. And then it closed in 1964 by Beach. And I'm always thinking of the dates it closed. Today, it's so easy. I can just say, this station opened today on the 24th of May. 2022, but I just like saying this station opened today. You know, it didn't open last week or anything, it opened today. I'm here on the day it opened. It's like I'm part of history, which is just so exciting. I love how all the lines sort of curve around. It's very easy on the eye, this station. Look at that. Great big uh, tunnel. No way out. Down there. Um, let's go back to the other platform. The train, oh, the train coming in. Let's just watch the train come in. Is all stations to Paddington, calling at Liverpool Street, Farringdon. Tottenham Court Road and Paddington. Please change at Liverpool Street for all services to Shenfield and at Paddington for all services to Heathrow Airport and Turin. Please allow passengers off the train before boarding. The one thing I will say, the trains aren't quite so photogenic to film them arriving and departing with the PEDS in a way. For those who don't know, PEDS is platform edge doors. Uh, but you know, I thought we'll film that because it's just nice to get a bit of first day arrival on, you know, an announcement from the first day. So that unit is 345 number 029. Another thing I've noticed is, see those seats, the seats that, um, you know, the longitudinal seats, when a train pulls in, they face the other side of an advert. So when you're sat there, you can't actually look out onto the station, you look out at an advert. So um, that's another little note. So we're gonna leave that train to go to Paddington. We're gonna find our way out of this station. It's just massive in here. I, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's over the top, but perhaps because the line's not up to its full usage yet, you know, it, although it is its first day, it's been very well publicized. It, you know, it will take a while for people to really get used to it. There's another train coming in on this side. Another bit of first day announcement. It's approaching now. We might as well watch that one go, or arrive rather, and we'll just try and find our way out. So there comes another train. These platforms are, are, are long, you know, you, I'm sort of getting used to them. That's number, unit number eight, three, four, five, zero, zero, eight. Arriving there. The clock, that's not the correct time. It's not 8.40 in the morning. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon. There we are, look, this clock's right. It's, yeah, it's 11 minutes past one, as that clock shows. I suppose so, you know, it's the first day. Things aren't gonna be. 100% perfect, but I just, just thought it just looks like it's not 8 o'clock. Anyway, let's, um, let's try and find our way out of this modern warren of tube. Well, it's not tube lines, is it? Even now I'm saying it. Well, look at that. It tells you about the artwork on the platform. So that's his artworks. You see there. Right, let's find our way out. It seems, uh, this is, so this one, is there only one way in and out of the Elizabeth lines? I think there might be. I know there's certainly more than one way in and out of the station because I've been in and out of this station before. It has developed quite a lot over the years, but I think there's a, yeah, there appears to be only this way out of the Elizabeth Line platform. There's another escalator ahead of us. There's London Overground, Hammersmith and City Lines. It's funny here because the Overground is below the Underground, but the Elizabeth Line is below both of them. Right, we've got a long escalator to go up. I'll see you at the top. As we near the top, we've gone from the tunnel light bit to the more boxy light bit. If you look behind, that's quite exciting. I like that. Looks like I'm standing at the jaw of a shark almost. A bit, almost a bit scary, but yeah. I don't think that's how it was meant to look, but that's how it kind of looked a bit now. That's quite a long escalator. Right, where are we? We're somewhere at Whitechapel. Gold-plated Whitechapel, by the way. Oh, I know where we are. So, we come out here and we're above that's the London Overground platforms down there. Um, let's see if we can walk along them. So there's, that must be a way, well, it's a future way out. Um, right, I'll, let's just go down since we're here. So this is oh, it's cooler down here. So we're going down into some very old London Underground line. Um, just have a look and to show you the change. So come down here, although it all feels quite modern, but you can see the older bricks so this is the london overground line 
I remember when it used to terminate here and there was peak hours only service through to Shoreditch. I always think it'd be good if they could reconnect that and um, you know, could run a Liverpool Street to Crystal Palace say, service. But I don't suppose it will. There's a London Overground train pulling in now. So that is going to Highbury and Islington. I'm going to find my way out this end. I just can hear the Hammersmith and City Line district line above us. Here comes the London Overground train. I remember when they were brand new, they don't seem so new now. I remember doing this line, it's before I started making videos, but I do remember when um, the East London line was extended, doing a bit like what I'm doing today, just not talking to a camera the whole time on that. So that was you know, quite exciting. So I'm finding my way up here, I think, coming up to the Hammersmith and City district line platforms. I'm like, yes I am, and there's a train pulling in. There's something I did want to point out here, though, to do with Crossrail. Train's pulling in now. That train is heading east, but that will stay north of the Thames. I remember when there were two through tracks here. So you used to get, well, basically, yeah, were two island platforms. So a bit like I was saying at Bank in the other video, I'll be on the platform here. Now I'm standing where the track used to be, and we're outside. Another train pulling in. So they filled this in and made it just two tracks for the sake of putting in this new entrance. Now, if we go out this new entrance, there's a couple of things up here to show you. One is where we came up from the Elizabeth line, we went down again to the overground platforms. There was a long corridor which we could have walked along. We should be at the end of that corridor when we come out here. So we go through here. And um, yeah, that's what I thought. So if you have a look here, down those steps, that's the end of that walkway. It takes the Elizabeth line. London overground lines are below us. It's interesting this roof. I like how it sweeps along above us. It's like, um, I don't know, being underneath a giant lizard or something. It's a strange building. I want to see where... Oh, I see this will take us out to... out onto the street. So let's go through the gate line here. Awkward barrier. Typical. Didn't open the ticket barrier, so I need to go and ask a member of staff to let me through. Excuse me, my ticket didn't open the ticket barrier. Yeah. Thanks very much. It's annoying. That's the problem with paper tickets. They do that sometimes, but the gentleman let me through. One other thing I just want to point out here. If you're going this way, you don't want to walk through the station. You can get to the other side of the track by following this path down there to Dunbar Street. So that takes you out the back of the station without you needing to go through the gate line. Let's go out here. So we've been outside. I'm going to come back in again. There is no other entrance. Well, apart from the Dunwood one, but I'm not going to worry about that because there's only one gate line. Um, we'll go out there and find that. Another interesting thing worth pointing out, um, not many stations in the UK have this. This is one of a few bilingual stations. See, it says, well, welcome to Whitechapel. And it says it in another language. I'm not entirely sure which language. You know comment and tell me the only other stations I can think about which have um, bilingual apart from the Welsh and Scottish ones Southall has it in Punjab and if you go to Newcastle have a ride in the Tyne and Wear Metro you'll find Walls End Station has the signs in Latin and that's because it was at the end of Hadrian's Wall I'm going to go back in and I'm going to ride to the next station just lighted off this train 345001 the pioneer of the class so as that continues towards Abbey Wood, we've now got out here Canary Wharf. So let's go and have a look around this station. Another large station doesn't have quite the same feel because it's more of a, a box-like construction. I have a feeling when they built this one, they excavated downwards and kind of built a building in a big hole rather than built it like a tube. There's a lot of space on the other side of the platform, which is interesting. So let's go up the escalator, see what we can find. I'm not sure how many entrances and exits there are, there's just the one here. But we, well, that's what we're here to explore, to find out everything. It doesn't seem like it's such a long escalator. Of course, um, Canary Wharf is well known, it's got Jubilee Line, it's got Docking Site Railway, so there's interchange with, with those. So again, changed to Canary Wharf many times, just not for the, the Elizabeth Line. And Canary Wharf is, it's all, they're all fairly new, and if you do Docking Site Railway, it's fairly new, Jubilee Line's fairly new, so it's, you know, it's quite interesting how it's, 
keep, seems to keep getting the new ones every few years. So we get to here. So we've got this huge concourse here. There's a gate line down there. And uh, there's a gate line here. So we'll, we'll go out this gate line. And then what we'll do, we'll, I'll probably walk around the street level, come back in to the other side. But unlike the other stations, there's this sort of mezzanine area where, you know, you come in through both gate lines and then you can go down to the platforms. So in theory, you could come in this way, but walk right down to there at the mezzanine level. Right, let's get out the station. It's getting annoying now. My ticket's not open the barrier. I have to go and ask them to open it for me. I think the magnetic strip on my ticket has worn out, so I'm going to have to. Seems I'm having to ask every station, which is a bit annoying. That's obviously the benefit of, of Oyster, but anyway, I've got a travel card today. I'm going to now follow this long escalator up to ground level. See you at the top. Just coming to the top of this escalator, and uh, we'll see what we find. I'll give you an idea of how long it is. Lots of ah, water and um, building work going on. There's a DLR station over there, I think that's Poplar station, I think, I, and there's another DLR station there. So, here we have, yeah, this is, uh, I didn't kind of expect to come out of the water. That's a new building they've built above Canary Water Station, it's huge. They say if it was to stand up, it would be taller than um, number one Canada Place, which at one point was the tallest building in Britain. That's now hiding somewhere in amongst all the other stations. So, there it says Elizabeth Line. And there's Dr. Zyke Railway and lots of water. I'm going to make my way round to the other end and we'll go back down in from there. I'm just coming up the escalators to into the building. It's known as Crossrail Place. See it there? There's some roof gardens up here, so we'll come see. So we're here. So then you've got various shops down there, then you've got the concourse, and right down the bottom, you've got the Elizabeth Line, which of course we're in the process of riding. It's quite interesting to see the building. See this wooden um, structure with all these triangles. There must be quite a few hundred triangles and all this. It's very interesting structure and as you come to here a roof garden opens out in front of you. So that is really quite cool. So it's like you can sort of walk through a jungle up in London. It's a bit strange. It feels a bit strange but in a good way. So I'm going to walk through here to the other end and when I get to the other end I should go back down onto the um, Elizabeth Line. There's various sculptures you can see on display in amongst these gardens. There's like one main path that runs through the middle, winds its way through the middle. And then what I find exciting are these little winding paths that go off and you're never quite sure where they're gonna go. You know, it's, it's sort of like, well, we are technically outside. It's been raining, you can see, yeah, it's been raining. You can see up above us. So natural rainwater does come in here. So we're not like in a big greenhouse. It doesn't feel too hot and humid like, you know, you'd get in a greenhouse, it just feels, I don't know, just, just, just different, but in, in quite a nice way. I think that's a lift shaft there in the middle, so you can get a lift, or will be able to get a lift right down to the bottom eventually. Go through here, I'll look at that, I'm gonna continue walking through here, I'm gonna make way right back down to the Elizabeth line. Back down at ground level, following that really rather surreal experience, Across the water there is Billingsgate Fish Market. That's the building we were in. Funny looking thing, again, it feels a bit like a, I don't know, like a giant shark that's come out of the water. We're going to now go back into the Elizabeth Line. I thought I just heard a train go. Now, every now and then I also hear the sound of aircraft going not too far away from London City Airport. So this is now the other end of this huge building. So they say if you stood this up, it would be taller than Canada Place. The, what was once Britain's tallest building, which as I said is around here somewhere, but it's hiding in amongst the other buildings. So this is Canary Wharf. Let's go in, let's go down and continue our eastwards journey on the Elizabeth Line. Got three more stations to visit, so still all very exciting. I'm going down this escalator, I'll go down through the gate lines to get on the train. Here we are, back down at ticket hall level again. I'm gonna go through the barriers and down to the platforms. Just come through the barriers, I'm now in this vast concourse area again. So a moment ago, we went out that end, we're now down this end, so we're at the eastern end. We're gonna continue, We've still got Custom House and North Woolwich, and finally Abbey Wood to explore. So this escalator here will take us now 
back down to the platform level where we will continue to go eastwards. It's all very exciting. I just like the fact that I'm here on the first day, you know, in, when they talk about the 20th anniversary, the 50th anniversary, I'll be able to say I was, I was there on the day that the Elizabeth line opened. There's the platforms, let's train it one minute. I'm going to go and board it and continue eastwards. Here we are, we're at Custom House now, and we're above ground. We've now come out into the open for this section of line. Now, this section of line technically isn't new track for me, it's new in its new guys, but I've been along this route. Sunny, welcome to the new Custom House Elizabeth Line station. The next train arriving on platform B will be your westbound service towards Paddington. This service is calling at... So it's good to hear these first day announcements, as again, I can say this station opened today, although it is actually on the site of an older station. So I have been along here before when this used to be the North Woolwich branch, but then it was third rail, it wasn't overhead. Also interesting to notice there's no um, heads here, platform edge doors, because we're outside. So what we're going to do, we're going to find our way out. Oh, and there's, a, there's an aeroplane there, taking off to the airport, somewhere behind that pylon. You can certainly hear it. The interesting thing involving City Airport is when we get on the train and we continue eastwards, we will be going underneath City Airport because the railway goes through a tunnel under City Airport and I've been through that tunnel before. Little, it's not really a waiting room, but a waiting area with like a screen. Reminds me of in Germany, they have these areas on railway stations, but they're for smokers. There'll be no smoking on here though. So let's find our way out of the station. So it's a bit more, um, oh, well, there's a the train arriving. Three, four, five, oh, three, five. So um, we're going to go up here and have a look. It's not quite as iconic this station. It's a bit more sort of utilitarian looking. A bit more utilitarian looking. Now, one thing I'll show you while we're here and we've not got the heads in the way. I just want to show you that on the um, dot matrix indicator. See how they show the head code as well. That's the train's head code, which hey, is quite interesting to see. It's nice to be so warmly welcomed, though, by all these announcements. So we're going up here. Um, and the big building over there is the NXL Exhibition Centre. There's also the Docklands Light Railway beside us, so you could interchange with that. I thought we'd see a train come along. Let's have a look up here. We might. We'll see the much, much smaller. That's the much, much smaller Docklands Light Railway station over there. Here you are, the view over the station. Docklands Light Railway. You can see the next Docklands Light Railway station just up there. There's only one entrance, so I'm not going to go that way and come back. That's the escalator up out of here. This is um, quite a pleasant concourse upper area. Looking over the streets down there. And then up there. I can see Roundels, it says Elizabeth Line and DLR. So probably in future, if I come to an exhibition at the edXL Centre, I'll probably now come on the Elizabeth Line. Sorry DLR, but you know, I probably will come on the Elizabeth Line. So what happens here? Oh, I see, so we've got two, two sets of gate lines. You've got this one here, so that must go through to Docklands Light Railway Station, because on the whole, Docklands Light Railway Stations don't have ticket barriers. And that gate line, looking at it, they all seem to be in only, unless they've got a one-way system in operation. And then there's another gate line up here, which will take us out. So I'm gonna walk that way. We'll go and have a look out the station. So I've just come out that gate line. There's a lift shaft, look at that Elizabeth line, DLR. And then that way takes you into the Edexcel exhibition center. Let's have a look here. So we're still above the Elizabeth line platforms and you can just see down there, you might just be able to see the tunnels up there. Trains have been running on this section for a few years now, because I remember I came to an exhibition here at um, Edexcel, came out Custom House Station to visit Edexcel, and, and I did see some trains running then. But as I said, we're not, we're not doing exhibition centre today. I'm going to make my way back into the station, the Crossrail station that is, not the DLR, and we're gonna continue to visit our next station. I've just got back on the train at Custom House and down the west end of the platform this time. Well, the reason I want to show you this bit is I want to show you the bit where we go under 
the city airport. It's quite an exciting tunnel. I remember going through it on the class 313s. I've also seen it on the video 125's driver's eye view when they did the driver's eye view of the North London line before the North London section closed. So as you can travel out here, we are running parallel with the DLR. DLR. And national rail services. So you, this will be a quicker way you could get this to North Woolwich, I'm um, sorry, to Woolwich Arsenal and you could get DLR. So that's Prince Regent DLR station up there. We're descending into tunnel now. So as I said, this is a reconditioned old tunnel. It's not um, a newly bored tunnel. It's all, all the track's been relayed and everything, but technically, see now you've got all these little, I don't know how I can see them, there's all these sort of arches. It's hard to see. Right now we should be going underneath the runway of City Airport and then we'll re-emerge into Woolwich Arsenal, although we also go under the Thames, so that was the final station above the Thames, so at some point, I'm not exactly sure where, we leave the original track to Woolwich Arsenal, because that line effectively got replaced by the Docklands Light Railway when it when they built, it originally went to King George V, then that was, you know, we're still on the original line, I can tell by looking out the window, um, when that was replaced by the line which eventually went through to um, Woolwich Arsenal. Oh, I know where we are. There used to be a station on here at Silvertown, which somewhere around here, I have a feeling, was Silvertown Station on the North Woolwich branch. Yes, we haven't gone under the Thames just yet. So as you can see, we're sort of running along by the street. So this was quite an interesting railway. There would have been, as you can see, docks and factories. There'd have been industrial railways everywhere here. Once perhaps one day I'll come and do a video We'll, um, you know, do, effectively do a disused railway video on the old North Woolwich branch because the station's still there. Look, a bit of a sad state now. Yeah, now we're going down under the Thames. The old North Woolwich station used to be a very good little museum, but unfortunately it closed, and it's not a museum anymore. It's a derelict building. But that's that's a video for another day. We're now going under the Thames, and the next stop is. Here we are at Woolwich. We're underground again. You can see the platform edge doors present again so so far custom house was the only station on this new section not to have them i think abby wood probably doesn't have them either i think there's only one entrance and exit goes a long way down there but i'm going to make my way out up to up to ground level there's woolwich arsenal station which is dlr and national rail served by southeastern so then we go up another longish escalator to see at the top We're near the top, we seem to be surrounded by bricks with a couple of concrete beams, quite quite interesting. I do like how you know each station is, is different. They've kind of got a similar family likeness in some ways, but in other ways they are all quite different. So here's the gate line. It does feel like now we have come to you know a smaller station rather than some of the larger ones we've seen. So I'm gonna make my way out. It looks like it's just started to rain. We'll have a look at what's outside and I'll be back in to go to the final station, which is Abbey Wood. Well, that's the entrance to the new Crossrail station at Woolwich. I'm standing in this rather pleasant courtyard and it's pouring with rain, although I expect it will stop soon. It wouldn't be an opening of a new railway line in England if it didn't rain. There's uh, some cannons everywhere, hence why the other station is known as Woolwich Arsenal. It's really quite nice here, though. There's lots of new houses and they've done up all the older buildings, so created a very pleasant little square. But right now, I think it's time for me to go back inside, back in the dry, and ride to the final station, Abbey Wood. So here we are, we have arrived at Abbey Wood, last station of the day, but first station alphabetically on the UK Rail map. That's the um, end line down there, so this is looking back towards London. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk up, we're going to, hello, hello, we're going to go, we're going to go round and have a look around the station and see what there is to see. So there's one of the the new trains just there and we go up the steps here because there's a bridge here which is gives you interchange with the South Eastern and the Thames League trains. Oh there's a train coming in, let's just watch that train come in. So as another train arrives there's this bridge here. Now the idea of having this bridge and there's two others so you've got three bridges, not three bridges in the station on the Brighton line but there are three bridges here is so with the trains being so long and the trains on the South East and the Thames Link are also quite long it means that you can you know have a seamless change you can get off the train here the end of the train is just there walk over the bridge and as you can see because the Thames Link train is nicely demonstrating you can get straight off one onto the other 
without having to walk massively along the platform. So what we'll do, we'll walk along the southeastern platform for a bit, then we'll go back over to the Elizabeth Line platform, we'll exit the station. So there's another bridge, probably not quite halfway down. If you look that way, you can see towards London. That Thames Link train should go out any moment, so we'll watch that go. While we're standing up here, I'll explain what Abbey Wood means or where the name Abbey Wood comes from. Have a look over there. You can see a woodland running along the top of the picture, continuing over there. Well, that is the wood, and there is also a ruined abbey. It's called Lesnes Abbey. Have a look at Link on screen now. You'll see a video I made there a couple of years ago when I went and explored the ruins of Lesnes Abbey. So that's a short walk from here. So if you are ever riding this new line, you know, do go and have a look around there. I think they've got a cafe and everything. It's a very pleasant park. So that's on the flatland, sort of over there behind that brutalist building. I'm not going to go there today. Today is more of all about riding the Elizabeth line. That Thames Link unit doesn't seem to be going. So perhaps we'll stop waiting for that. And it'll be nice to see it go out. But it doesn't seem to be wanted to go. Anyway, we're going to go down here have a look at the rest of the station and we'll make our way out because this station was an existing station but it's been rebuilt I'm fairly sure when I and there goes the Thames Link train you know I'm fairly sure it used to be it didn't used to have an island platform it used to have you know two tracks and a platform each side but I suppose with the layout with the Elizabeth line it's easier for the station to have this layout of two island platforms. So we're going to follow along. I'm going to walk down the platform. Next uh, thing I'll show you is the bridge just up there. As I walk down the platform, it's interesting to know it does say Elizabeth Line that way. They don't seem to want to encourage you to use that bridge at the end of the platform. Maybe that's to do with the fact it, um, I don't think it had lift. Or did it? No, it didn't have any lifts, so that one is foot only. But the other bridges have lifts. So we'll continue along here. And it says Abbey Wood, buses, Elizabeth Line. There's this fence down the middle of the platform. Whether that's because they're worried that people might be silly enough to try and, if there wasn't a train there, go straight across. I'd like to think they wouldn't, but you never know. Sometimes people do do silly things. It just seems you don't normally get a fence down the middle of a platform like that. Train's departing now. Oh. Let's watch that one go. So, the way out of the station will be over there. But let's just go up over this bridge just to explore the whole station. So there are escalators. Um, we've got steps on this side and on this side, but the westward side of the bridge, they have escalators. Although it appears by looking at what people are doing, that one's up and that one's down. Um, there is there are, there's only a single escalator. And again, there is no lift. So one thing to note, if you are coming here and you're in a wheelchair, um, if you get off, say, further down there, you will have to go the full length of the platform. I'm surprised, actually, they haven't put some lifts in halfway down, but they haven't. So, um, yeah, all right, let's go down. Down here, the Elizabeth Line's got the not so attractive side of the fence, if I had a look of it. There's a train waiting. Still, a lot of people taking pictures that commented when we were down in the core section. It was quite funny seeing how everyone was taking pictures. You're sort of not used to seeing that, except like if a steam train's coming through or something, but because it's new and it is day one, so it's like I'm walking on this platform. This platform opened today. I just really like saying that, you know, to say that I, I just like it. I was here on the day that the Elizabeth line open to the public has been running trains for a while now you know to sort of bed it in but today is the first day we're going to go up there now that actually used to be level crossing here that building there looks like a pub so once upon a time there was a level crossing here oh look there's another train pulling in 345018 so actually yeah it used to be a level crossing here but that would be well these trains certainly don't cross the road, but they're a bit, a bit in the way things change. It's a nice, uh, I like the wooden ceiling of the station. Over there is the Thames Reed Estate. The other side of the Thames Reed Estate, another very interesting place, the Crossness engines. They're beautiful steam engines, but they were built, believe it or not, to pump London sewer out. So we'll have to go there one day. They won't be working today. That is certainly somewhere we should go. 
This is a really nice station. They like this, you've got seats up here to wait. There's a gate line there. I'm gonna go through, we'll go out the station and then that will, I'll end the video there. So I've come out the gate line at Abbey Wood and I have now ridden Crossrail. Had great fun, it was very exciting to, you know, to see this new line, new addition to the map that we've all waited such a long time for. You know, I was just saying about the level crossing, I might be able to show you, give you a bit better idea of how it would have been. If you look down the bottom of those steps, there's a pub called the Abbey Arms, obviously after the Abbey, the road would have gone straight across there where the station building is, so that would have been the level crossing. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. You know, do come and ride the Elizabeth line yourself. It's, it's good fun, no doubt. Most of you will probably use it anyway. It's just part of your new day-to-day um, -day commute to and from work to see friends to enjoy London. So, from outside Abbey Wood Station, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.